Okay, I'm gonna retake it and again, hoping that I don't get a question I've done before. Okay, I don't think I've done this. Space probe, that wasn't one of the ones I've done. So, okay, let me do this a space probe question. Um, all right, it says, a tiny space probe of some mass is in deep outer space. Uh, let me just start by sketching because it's not giving me any uh, picture to start with. So I have a space probe of some mass. At a certain instant, an internal explosion occurs. Explosion. Splitting the probe into two pieces oh, of the same mass. I don't know if they are always going to be same mass. I think there are versions of the question where they are different masses. So let me solve this uh, um, kind of using not their actual masses but a label of the masses, M1 and M2, to cover the scenarios where the masses might be different. You were told by, yeah, no one, was, no one died. <laughs> uh, some energy is released. Yeah, this explosion involves some ad addition of some energy during the explosion, adding to the total kinetic energy of the two pieces, okay? Um, was it already moving? Uh, find the post-explosion velocity of each piece. Uh, okay, if the space probe was at rest. So that's actually kind of the easier scenario. So if we are saying uh, for the purpose of part A that the um, initial speed of this um, of this thing was zero, that makes some of your expressions easy because from this you can say your initial kinetic energy was zero. Okay, I don't know if that helps, but what helps is you can say the initial momentum was zero that will allow you to um, simplify some things that uh, you can't quite as easily simplify when um, the, pr the probe initially had some velocity. So, um, so, I'll, so in this uh, explosion, so momentum is gonna be conserved. So we'll say momentum conserved. And although energy won't be conserved, I can write down an expression that comes from conservation of energy, basically trying to make use of this information that some amount of energy is released. So let me start out with my conservation of momentum equation, which is to say my initial momentum was zero. So zero is equal to the momentum of my two pieces. So the two pieces will be moving one in one direction at speed of V1, the other in the opposite direction at speed of V2. So I will write it down as, uh, the momentum of a piece that's going in the negative direction, uh, minus m1 v1, plus momentum of the piece that's going in the positive direction. I keep coding, putting quotation around the negative and positive because really what matters is their uh, actual direction in the physical space. So uh, I'm just defining my axis in such a way that uh, one is negative and one is positive. So that's one equation. I have two unknowns, uh, V1 and V2. Both of them are unknown. I need a post-explosion velocity of each piece. So, um, so I need a second equation to tell me, um, to, to, to be able to solve for both unknowns. Um, so that second equation comes from what, uh, uh, let me call it a version of, um, uh, version of energy conservation. And basically what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say um, I have some total energy final and subtract off my total energy initial. And when I have this expression, I'm going to be able to relate it to some change of energy. And I'm going to be able to express what that change of energy is. And for this question, that's exactly this expression here. I'm given the change of energy. Uh, but there might be scenarios where you have to work out the work being done by some non-conservative force. So here, I will write out my total mechanical energy. So my final mechanical energy should be uh, one half mass of one times its speed squared plus one half mass of the other one times its speed squared. That's a total final energy minus, and if this wasn't moving initially, then my initial kinetic energy is zero, minus zero. That's equal to change of energy. So I have one, two equations, two unknowns. I should be able to solve it. Let me check how much time I have left, uh, 15 minutes. 
uh, I might be able to do this by hand. Let me do that. So, uh, so let me solve this for uh, V2. I, with a V2, eliminating V2. Then V2 is going to be M1 over M2 times V1. I'm going to plug this into the second equation. Then I get 1 half. Uh, let me do some simplification as we go. Um, I have M1 times M1 squared. Wait, I'm plugging into wrong space. This is V1 squared plus 1 half M2 times M1 squared over M2 squared V1 squared. I see some cancellation here. And I'm going to say this is equal to delta E. And I can do some factoring out to help me simplify. I can factor out 1 half. I can factor out a fac one factor of M1. And I can factor out uh, V1 squared. V1 squared. Factoring that out, the first term becomes 1 plus, And in the second term, I have one factor of M1 remaining and one factor of M2. M1 over M2 is equal to change of energy. So the rest of the step is to solve for the V1 here. V1 is equal to um, delta E divided by 1 plus M1 over M2 times, I'm just doing this in my head, 2 over M1 square rooted. And in the interest of time, I'll just leave my answer that way. So V1 is equal to square root of delta E divided by 1 plus M1 over M2 times 2 divided by M1. And I can say V2 is given by um, the expression I had earlier. Um, M1 divided by M2 times V1. Strictly speaking, I should really plug this uh, into um, here. Now, if I did that, then what it would be is, you know, M1 over M2 times that. <laughs> so, um, just, just leaving it this way, it's not all that different, so I will just uh, leave it that way. Um, in, you know, in a, a homework, I might have asked you to simplify, but with a time limit of 20 minutes, it's okay not to simplify everything, as, as long as um, you've done some enough of it so that your expression doesn't look overly complicated. So part B, if the space probe was traveling at this speed, oh, now it changes. Okay, let me copy this over and I will make the change. So for part B, uh, now it's not moving at zero. It's uh, moving at some speed of V naught. Oh, okay. I can just say V naught, not zero. Then find the post explosion velocity of each piece, assuming all velocities are collinear. Okay. That makes things a little bit simpler. It's a still one dimensional problem. So um, in part B, you can do it two different ways. Uh, one way would be to, if you have some sense of the, um, the uh, kind of relativity principle or transformation of the velocities, you could take this and kind of add um, so. Um, so, assuming V1 goes in the opposite direction from V0, um, you could say V1 is going to be V0 minus that. Um, the speed it would have had in the center of mass frame. And V2 would be getting this added. So, V0 plus that. Um, so, you could do that. That would be totally fine, correct. And you could justify it that way. Uh, let me, since I've been using computer algebra system, let me use the computer algebra system, do this the long way, and still do it correctly. And uh, if you want, you can compare them to see, oh, how close are they? Uh, you might have to do some comparison of expressions to make sure that uh, they make sense. So uh, with the outlook of trying to use computer algebra system, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, oh, so initially I have the initial momentum of the total mass, m, times v0. And um, the, so for the energy conservation, I would have to say there's uh, 1 half m v0 squared. 
And uh, I think with this, um, yeah, and M1 and M2, um, if we want to further simplify, we could put in an equation like M1 plus M2 is equal to big M. But uh, let me not do that because in uh, part A, I actually didn't enforce that. So let me just let them be uh, and uh, just to do this in sage math. Where's my, okay, yeah. So uh, I, let me define my symbols. It's going to be uh, capital M, um, um, and uh, M, M1, M2, um, V1, or V0, V1, V2, I and uh, I think I need uh, delta E. So those are all my symbols. And let me define my two equations. Equation 1 is M times V0 is equal to minus M1 times V1 plus M2 times V2. Uh, I, I've been using capital M. Be consistent here. Equation two is equal to um, one half m one times v one squared plus one half. Uh, should have had times there. It's, it'll complain because it doesn't do implicit multiplication. Two squared minus one half times m times v not squared is equal to delta e. Oh, I have a typo there. Should have had two equal signs. Um, that looks good. Um, so my, let me just double check the equations. Yeah, my momentum conservation and kind of energy conservation equation. And I'll say solve these equations for uh, V1 and V2. That makes it treat everything as known, like a mass, um, the smaller masses, and I can just plug in the given quantities later. So let me put that into solutions variable. And yeah, I get that. <laughs> so uh, you might want to simplify it. I, I don't think you would want to give that um, as the answer there. So what I can do is, let's see. I think uh, um, I am given only, only one set of solution, no two. So I have... Let's look. Um, the first set of solutions is that. Oh, you know what? I think they are probably going to be same as each other, except with the directions reversed. So I'm just going to take the first element. because um, um, That's basically doing this version of the work there. So I'm going to take the first version. Okay, I got seven minutes. Um, so let me make sure I plug in. This, um, the, the masses. So for this version of the question, I'm given m1 is equal to m, m divided by 2, and m2 is uh, also m divided by 2. So that'll simplify it quite a bit, yeah. And so I'll have that, and um, I have the v2. And I think I, by luck, uh, picked the version where v1 is negative and v2 is positive. So this is what... Um, this is, um, uh, so I'll say, uh, from CAS, from CAS, this, and the other answer. And I'll make a sense of those, how well they uh, match up with each other after um, I have answered all the, everything else. Um, so this is, so the first answer, I got it by doing, uh, by doing um, uh, the kind of velocity transformation. And this is where you're just solving it brute force by setting up initial equations and just solving it. And doing it by hand would take quite a bit of time, as you can kind of guess from the complicated expressions we got. But CAS can do it quite quickly. And uh, once you have values to plug in, also simplifies relatively quickly. So before I run out of time, let me attempt to C and D. Suppose the slower one moves at 25% of the speed of the faster piece. What is the amount of R? Ah. So this is where having it set up in computer algebra system actually helps me. Because um, instead of, um, let's see, could I have, I could have done, I think I could do this by hand. Um, but let me do it this way. I'm going to just continue using computer algebra system. And what I'm going to do is, given these equations, 
instead of uh, solving for v1 and v2, what I can say is, um, um, I, I can say that um, I, I can instead solve for one of the speeds, let's say v1 and uh, delta e or del e. And I think it'll still be able to solve. Is it able to solve? Yeah, it's solved for it. And I can, uh, having solved, I can plug in uh, the, the um, I, I can plug in the given information that, uh, so out of this solution, I can substitute in the masses for one, which are given, and I can say, um, so I guess in this version of the solution, I think if we want, I want to say v1 is the slower one. Let, let me just guess if v1 is the slower one and say v2 is, um, so um, if v1 is the slower one, then v2 should be v1 divided by 0 0.25. So with that, I get, uh, no, it didn't solve completely for v1. Oh, no, uh, I actually have to, um, let me do it this way. Um, uh, it, sorry, I'm kind of twisting myself into knots. And I think, it, sorry, it's actually easier to just use this. Um, let me do it that way. Starting from... Um, so you are setting... Um, so you are setting a v1 is equal to 0 0.25 v2. Um, then I think I can, so v1 is that. So out of the second equation, I can get, um, so from equation two, I can get, um, V2 is equal to V0 plus, um, here that factor is going to be 1 times 0 0.25 V2. I can solve for V2, which is going to be um, um, V0 divided by 1 minus 0 0.25. And I can plug this into here. Um, or uh, rather, wait, what am I doing? Um, so v, V2 being this. I can plug it into here, uh, which will give me V1 is equal to 0 0.25 times um, that, V0, the numerical factor. And I can plug this into the expression, the, in the first equation. So say this is equal to V0 minus square root of delta E divided by one plus M1 divided, or one, so two times, um, times two divided by M1. So um, from, from here, solve for delta E. That is something you can do given enough time. I'm gonna run out of time. So after the time limit runs out, I'll finish that. Uh, from C above, you find one solution that satisfies given conditions. There are a total of two possible. Um, <laughs> all right, so I think I do have to just take the time to do this uh, properly. <laughs> so let me do it this way. Um, so let me do it by hand. I think especially in the scenarios where there are multiple solutions, it, uh, um, computer algebra system sometimes doesn't do a very good job of finding all the uh, solutions that will match up. So let me just take my time and have it as M1 breaking up into M2. Um, we are going to have this going off at V1 and V2. And this whole thing initially is moving at some speed V0. Okay. And uh, let me start out with the solution that computer algebra system got for me here. So I can say, and I, 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 while I'm writing it down, I'll also simplify it. I'll say V1 is equal to, um, I'm going to be dividing by, uh, 
square of m, so I can say, okay, um, I, I knew it was going to do that. Uh, so let me just to finish doing this. Um, I have, um, so the first term, which is going to be minus v0, I'm canceling out that um, the m squared with the denominator m squared. And then I'm going to have still minus 2 times square root of 1. So let me combine the square root. It'll be... Um, so it'll be square root of um, delta E times M cubed divided by, oops, um, shouldn't have done that, divided by 1 half. And I still have to remember to divide by M squared from this denominator earlier. So absorbing this inside the square root, it's going to become um, M to the fourth power. So canceling out most of this, so the, the simplifying this expression, v1 is minus v0. Um, yeah, yeah, minus 2 times square root of delta e divided by 2m. Okay. That's one expression. And, and oh, and I'm already within the version where this is going to be m divided by 2, and this is going to be m divided by 2. So if you have a version of question where these methods are not divided up this way, then um, you'll have to start with a new expression here. Um, and then let me finish writing now v2. Uh, v2 is equal to all of that. So m squared cancels that out. So I have v naught minus um, all of that. Yeah, the expression looks quite symmetric. I think that is to be expected. 2 times the square root of delta e divided by 2m. Because uh, the way these two masses were divided, they are symmetric. So in fact, you can kind of see here that um, you can see that um, so for the exactly right v naught, you could actually make a v1 uh, 0. If uh, your v naught starting value was exactly this, um, or sorry, um, so, so uh, you can make this 0. Uh, if a v naught starting value was exactly this, put that in here, then it'll cancel out the 0. So, um, there's a scenario where one of them will just come to a rest. And I guess uh, the sign is a little bit funky. Um, uh, so uh, funky in the sense that, uh, so I think uh, the solution that I ended up getting is actually um, it, these two reversed. So if my v naught is, if I make my v naught negative, then I think I can make it work. Then uh, v2, if I make my v not negative, then um, so let's see. So the way I have it written, I want my v not labeled in the same direction as v2, but then actually plug in negative values. Then um, then yeah yeah the, then it'll add it to v2. And um, I, I don't like this version of the solution. There's a second version that I discarded. I think if I go with that, I'll get um, slightly more easier to um, comprehend uh, equations. So uh, did I get rid of? Yeah, I think I got rid of them. So out of this, I got the, the first expression, but let me get the second solution. Uh, that might actually give me the something that's a, a little easier to interpret. Um, yeah, so in the second version, so this is plus and and yeah, this is plus. So that's a little bit easier to interpret. Then um, V1 is already pointed in the negative direction and 
I think of all this. Yeah, yeah. So V not add and yeah, I don't have to do the mental gymnastics of figuring out the signers. <laughs> yeah. So um, for C, I would be using this as the starting place. So this is my equations one and two. And I'm saying, okay, let's, uh, so for C, I would say, okay, let's uh, impose this condition. I have sense my V1 is always going to be smaller than V2. So I say V1 is equal to 0 0.25 over V2. And then solve for delta E here. And, um, and what I was trying to do quickly there, uh, let me just try to do it from scratch. <laughs> so I'm solving for delta E, which occurs in both. Um, I think uh, my goal is to eliminate both the V1 and V2, because they are both unknowns. So, so I can uh, plug this in into the first equation to get 0 0.25 V2 is equal to minus V0 plus 2 square root of that. And then um, I can solve for, v well, second equation is actually solved for V2 already. I can plug it in here. Then what I get is 0 0.25 V0 uh, plus 2 times 0 0.25 or 1 half uh, square root of it, uh, delta E over 2M is equal to minus V0 plus 2 square root of delta E over 2M. So now I can um, collect the like terms, collect these terms together and everything else on the other side. Then what I end up with is 1.25 V0, collecting them on the left hand side, collecting this on the right hand side, I get two minus one half, which will be four half minus one half. So three halves, uh, yeah, three halves square root of delta E over two N. And then I think of the mathematical operation that'll get rid of all these other things outside of delta A. So I'm thinking that through. I should be multiplying through by two thirds. And then after having done that, I should be squaring them to get rid of square root. And then after having done that, I should be multiplying by 2m. That'll get me by delta A by itself. So delta A by itself is equal to Take this uh, two thirds, so 2.5 divided by three. Um, it doesn't simplify. <laughs> so 2.5 divided by three, if we not, I'm gonna square them and then multiply by 2m. So that's an answer. Uh, you can actually simplify this a little bit. Um, so what is that? Uh, 2.5 divided by three, that's uh, five uh, sixth. I think, yeah, 5, 6 squared, so 25 over 36. 25 times 2 is 50 over 36 and V naught squared. So um, so that's the energy that you would say, oh, that's how much energy was added uh, to the explosion. And um, after you get this answer, part D says uh, you found one solution that satisfies the given conditions. And there are actually two possible solutions because um, when it says the slower of the two pieces is moving at this speed, there's actually another possibility for part D, uh, which I will, uh, let me copy and paste so that I can kind of start from scratch here. So for part D, um, the other scenario which would uh, give you that um, um, another solution for delta E is one where your V1 goes in the um, opposite of the unexpected direction, where it goes in the minus 0 0.25. So instead of going to the left, it might be moving after explosion, it might be moving alongside. V0 might be so high or V1 so the added velocity so low that it might be going in the same direction. So there's a, a version of delta E that comes from that. So let's walk through that. I think I might actually be able to copy and paste a lot of this work because it's a matter of making sure I have the correct signs as I copy, you know, as I uh, uh, as I retrace that work. So um, where before I plugged in 0 0.25 V2, it'll be 
minus 0.2582. And let's see if uh, we get um, um, sensible answer still. So that was plugged into here. And I'm still, um, let's see. Oh, and I'm plugging in V2 from up here. So I just carry the minus sign, minus 0 0.25 and minus 1 half. Still collect the like terms. And collecting the like terms, this time it changes a little bit. So let me get rid of this because this is going to change entirely. Um, so the left-hand side, when I uh, collect this, instead of being 1.25, it'll be 1 minus 0 0.25. So it'll be 0 0.75. 0 0.75. And the right-hand side, instead of 3 halves, it'll be uh, so 4 halves plus 1 half. So it'll be... Um, five halves, five halves, and I still think through the same thing. I'm trying to get delta A by itself, so this time I'm multiplying through by two fifth to get rid of this, and then I'm squaring the whole thing again, and then multiplying by two m to get delta A by itself. And when when I've done that, I get um, so zero point seven five. Let me just write out the fractions. I can't do this in my head anymore. So 0 0.75, that's a 3 fourths. So 3 fourths times 2 fifths uh, times V naught still squared times 2M. Okay. So I can simplify here. Um, so this is going to be 3 tenths. Um, yeah, 6 divided by 20. Yeah, 3 tenths squared. That's going to be 9 over 100. 9 times 2 is 18, so this is going to be 18 over 100 mv naught. So uh, if you add this little energy compared to how much, you know, so when you add, when you add this much energy, then, um, then the v1 gets enough speed in the negative direction to um, kind of go, move in the negative direction. But when you add so little energy that V1 is not able to actually go in the negative direction, then it's kind of going in the positive direction, but at 25% of the speed of V2. So, so yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> it uh, took additional 10 minutes. Again, um, I recommend that uh, when you are solving through this, you know, don't do what I'm doing, which is I'm explaining things that, that takes time. Um, and um, and uh, you, you should focus on getting the answers to put into the answer boxes uh, within the time limit. That really should be your focus. And then after you're done with that, then, um, you know, take some time to organize your work. Uh, don't do what I was doing during the time limit, which is explaining the question to someone else that inevitably takes a little bit of time. And um, so use of computer algebra system, whether that saves your time or uses up to your time, uh, that only really, that sense of um, how useful it is really only comes with the practice. So I would say um, practice using computer algebra system while you are working on homework where you don't have any time limit. You have practically unlimited time. So, uh, so that's uh, the time to gain familiarity with the computer algebra system, not while you are working on these timed assessments where uh, I think I demonstrate time after time that uh, it, 20 minutes is not a lot of time. Um, and frankly, if you finish part A and B, that's a usually um, good performance. And I, you know, started doing that group review of timed assessments because a lot of people were ga getting um, mistaken impression of how well they understood material based on what they were able to do within 20 minutes, and that really is not my intent. Uh, you know, the 20 minute time limit it's an anti cheating measure that does have a real cost in terms of. Uh, people being able to actually finish out the uh, uh, questions that they are able to finish out. So let me just put in, uh, so this is computer algebra system work for part to be um, uh, second answer uh, also used for C and D work above. Um, and I think I'm leaving in some gaps where I change the sum of the signs, which answer you, uh, you use, but um, let me just leave it that way. Oh, well, I don't have a lot of work here. Yeah. So, 
But um, like pasting in this kind of tells me that you know how to use computer algebra system, and that it comes from you, not you know someone else who might have done the work for you. <laughs> so.